it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and I'm back to share a layout for Spiegel Mum Scraps. And I'm going to be using the Pink Silk Crepe Sequin Mix this time round. Absolutely gorgeous, love the tones in that. And I've printed off a photo of my little boy and I stood in front of a huge wooden butterfly. So I've obviously fussy cut loads of butterflies um, and I've picked out my title and I've got a few bits together that I want to use. So I'm going to make a giant shaker pocket today um, from a cut file. This is just a circular cut file with a scalloped edge and I've cut the outline here you can see and then I've cut a section to back it with. Um, so I'm just going around the edge of the back of the frame with quarter inch tear it tape. And you can get this from Spiegel Mum Scraps, it's double sided tape, it's brilliant for things like shaker pockets um, and just general things like sticking your ephemera and your photos and stuff down. Um, but I'm using it here for my shaker pocket because I didn't really want to use wet glue around the edge because once I've popped this down on my acetate I didn't want glue splurging out everywhere and ruining it. So I'm using the tear it tape instead. So it's quite hard to get it to go in a circular shape so I've just done it in little pieces. And now I'm peeling all the backing off and I'm going to stick that straight down onto a 12 inch piece of acetate. And that again, you can get from the Spiegel Mum store. And they actually do a um, shaker pocket starter kit. So you'll get your tear it tape, you'll get the um, 12 by 12 sheets of acetate. And you also get the roll of Big Mama foam tape roll, which um, you'll see me use in a minute. Fantastic stuff for shaker pockets that is. So I've got that frame stuck down to the acetate now, I'm just running the scissors around just trimming that off. Um, I was initially going to go around all the scallop shapes but decided it was easier to just uh, cut closer to the edge where you can't see. So that's obviously going to sit on top of that background piece there. I have marked a little pencil mark on um, one notch on both of them just so it lines up perfectly. I wasn't sure if this cut file would be perfectly symmetrical or not. Um, and as it turns out it wasn't so it's just as well I did that so I know I can line it up perfectly and now I'm going to go around the edge with the Big Mama foam tape roll uh, this stuff is quite moldable is that the word malleable moldable um, you can make it go in a circle shape you've just seen me do it there so um, I don't need to do that in loads of different sections I can do that in one huge piece which is quite helpful so um, I've just popped it over my arm a bit like a hamburger and I'm just applying that to the back I'm doing a double layer because I want to have a really deep pocket because I'm going to have those butterflies stuck in the middle of it um, and I want their wings to have a bit of dimension so I've just popped the top of my shaker pocket to one side for now. That is backed and ready for me to add the sequins. Um, just brought it back in quickly to make sure all my butterflies um, are going to be encased in that and not hanging off the edge at all. So I've got my photo here and I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm cutting out um, the actual kind of silhouette of, a, of my photo. So it's going to be butterfly shaped. Um, never done this before and I actually really like the effect of it. I've printed my photo in black and white because the uh, the huge sort of wooden butterfly you see there, that was a turquoise and teal colour with black and white on it um, and it really didn't go with my colour scheme at all for this layout. So printing that in black and white worked perfectly because the sequin mix itself has some black sequins in it, so black and white was the best option for this. I've cut these butterflies from a an older Coco Vanilla Studio paper. Um, it might be unforgettable. I can't remember the collection name, um, but they're perfect colours to match this sequin mix. So there's some grey ones, and then this kind of pinky peach tone. Um, it just matches the sequins absolutely perfectly. I was so pleased. I knew I had this sheet in my stash. And I had a feeling that it might match the sequins, but it wasn't until I got it out I realised just how perfectly it matched. So I was really chuffed with myself that I um, had this paper. So I've got my butterflies there. I've stuck them to the backing sheet and I've only stuck the bodies down because I want to leave the wings flapping for a bit of dimension. And now I'm poking a needle through that card. Um, I've got a bit of foam underneath it just to make it a bit easier for the needle to go through. And I'm just making some butterfly trails and I'm going to hand stitch those with some thread in a minute. Just for a bit more texture and a bit more interest in the background and to kind of make it, make it look like those butterflies are flying up the page.
So now I've got those pilot holes in place, it makes the stitching really easy. I know where I'm going and the needle obviously goes through that card really well. So I'm just using a white thread and doing a simple um, kind of back stitch or running stitch with that white thread just to create those trails. And I'm not going to make you watch all of this, it took me a while whilst uh, watching Netflix so I'm just going to skip through the rest of that and then I'll show you when I'm finished. So there we go, as if by magic all my stitching is finished and I love doing this with butterflies, it's something I do quite often. And you can see those uh, pencil marks I was saying about earlier just to make sure I get those cut file sections lined up perfectly. And I'm just adding a foam pad underneath each wing of the butterflies. This is just to make sure they don't go completely flat and they keep a bit of dimension. Obviously once they are encased in this shaker pocket, um, I can't ever bring those wings back up. So that was my only option, uh, sorry, my only opportunity to do that. And then I've got the front of my shaker pocket here and I've just emptied the entire pack of sequins onto that acetate. Uh, this is also a first for me, I have never used an entire pack of sequins on one layout before. So it gave me kittens a little bit, I'm not going to lie, um, but I just love the effect and I'm so glad I put them all in. I was tempted to just do half and kind of keep half back for another layout, but I'm really glad I went with the whole lot in the end because I think it looks really, really beautiful. And I've just trimmed around the edge of those scalloped bits, despite having those pencil marks and lining them up perfectly. Once I'd put the two bits together, they were a little bit wonky. Um, so I have just gone around with my scissors and trimmed all the scallops off the back piece. So you can't see it all, um, only I know and now you that it's done, uh, but it just means it was a bit neater. I'm using a bit more of that Big Mama foam tape there just to put along the edge of that frame to raise my photo up a little bit to help draw your eye to it. And that's just going to sit on that corner there. So when I planned this layout, I kind of knew I was going to do that shaker pocket. I knew I was going to have this sequin mix, the butterflies in it and the shape that I wanted my shaker. Other than that, I didn't really have much of a plan. So once I'd made my shaker, I was kind of sat there going, hmm, okay, what now? <laughs> um, so I decided when I, um, I get a bit like that, I just reach for the mixed media. So I'm keeping it simple with this. And I'm just gonna do some dry mixed media, I'm not adding much water or anything. I'm using a blending brush and two distress inks. So I've got Tattered Rose and Victorian Velvet, which both work really well with the sequin mix and those uh, kind of peachy coloured butterflies. And I'm just using the blending brush in a circular motion, adding the ink. I'm not worried about it looking too neat or even at this stage because I know that shaker pop the sequin shaker pocket is going to sit on top of that and then you won't really notice it as much and I'm also going to add a load of splatters as well so you will see that there's darker and lighter areas I'm really not that fast by the time I finished with it you can't really notice it that much um, it just adds a bit more detail to the page if you do so I'm not that fast about it being perfect I'm just extending that area out a bit just um, beneath my photo so that it peeks out behind that butterfly wing. I have to say it looks absolutely awful <laughs> like this um, but once it's all sort of finished and the shaker pocket is back on top I really love how it comes out. So I'm just adding some splatters in both of those colours so the tattered rose and the Victorian velvet. Um, just added a bit of the ink to some packaging, watered it down and just using a paintbrush to add some splatters. So I'm going to do that with both the colours just for a bit of variation. I'm also going to do some splatters with a Nouveau uh, Mika Mist I think it's called. Um, it's a really shimmery spray. Um, it's not the same kind of shade, it's more of a baby pink kind of colour, like powdery pink. Um, but again, it's just a bit of variation, brings a bit more detail in, um, and a, it's a really pretty shimmer. So I, I, I went for this one more for the shimmer than the colour, and I'm not worried about getting loads in the middle. I'm kind of tapping the first tap in the middle to get the bulk of the paint off the, um, what would you call it? I don't know, the straw thing in the middle. I can't think what it's called. So I've got the bulk of it off in the middle, so I just got finer dots around the outside. 
and then I got a bit brave and decided to add some black. So this is black acrylic paint, I've just watered it down and I am using a really, really tiny paintbrush for this. I didn't want huge splatters, I just wanted really fine ones. So this is like the tiniest paintbrush I own. I'm not even sure why I have it because you could never paint with it, it's that small. <laughs> um, but it was perfect for some fine splatters and I love how that is looking now. All those splatters kind of cover up the, the variation and shading with all that inking. Um, I just think it looks really, really beautiful. So I'm applying some double-sided tape to the back of that shaker pocket and getting that stuck in place now. And then I'm gonna add my title down to the bottom here. This is a kind of puffy sticker. It's from Paige Evans' Bloom Street collection, I think. Um, and again, the colours just matched perfectly. I was so happy going through my stash, just kept pulling things out that would work with this sequin mix. I was really chuffed that that worked. And then I'm just gonna add a couple more butterflies as well, one in the gray and one in that lovely kind of corally peach color. So I took a little bit of a pause here because I wasn't too sure how else to embellish this page. I didn't wanna bring in any more colors. Um, so I decided to just add a bit more black and white. So this is a stamp from um, one of the Vicky Booting collections. I think it might have been Let's Wonder could be storyteller can't remember um i don't actually own the stamp myself i have searched the globe for it and cannot find it in stock anywhere but a lovely lady saw my online pleas um, and she posted me her stamp and let me use it so i sort of repeatedly stamped loads of them so i've got a stash there now that i can cut out when i want to use them which is quite handy because i think i used six in total on this layout so i've added four kind of sprigs down the bottom here I'm just raising those leaves up with a foam pad behind them to bring in a bit more dimension. And then once I'd done that, I decided I wanted to balance the page out a bit and have a couple on the top left of my shaker pocket as well. So I just took some time to fussy cut a couple of those out and then I'm gonna get them stuck in place. So there we go, they're gonna go up at the top there. And I kind of thought at this point that I was done and then turn the camera off. And then when I went to photograph my layout, I decided that that frame of my shaker pocket just looked a bit bare and needed something. So I decided to go for Nouveau Drops. I originally pulled out a gray kind of metallic -y silver one, had a major, major fail with it. It was a bit clogged. So I put it in some warm water to help unclog it. And then when I took the lid off and tried to squeeze it, it exploded everywhere. Like the whole tub exploded out on me. Luckily it didn't go on my layout, but it did go on all my clothes. Um, so that got pushed to one side and I went for the black instead. Um, you'd have seen it on the full layout photo there and you'll probably see it on the close-ups. Um, but yeah, so I went round and did a dob of black Nouveau drop on each of those scallops. And then that's my layout finished. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope this has given you some inspiration. Like I said, there will be a link in the description box below to the store that will give you an automatic 15% discount at checkout. So keep that link, it won't expire. You can use that every time you shop at Spiegel Mum. And I will also leave a link to our Spread the Sparkle Facebook group as well. So if you're not a member, head over and join. But again, thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.